you see Etsy developing over the next couple of years, and what do you think is the significance of the return of one of the founders as CEO? So, um, it's a great question. Um, so e Etsy is, uh, for, if anybody doesn't know what Etsy is, Etsy is a marketplace, like an eBay kind of marketplace, where buyers and sellers come together and transact. And in Etsy, it's all around handmade uh, artistic goods. Everything from jewelry to ceramics to knitting to, uh, pot, uh, to woodworking, metalwork, um, and, even, and even supplies to make jewelry and, and, and knitting. And you can buy yarn, for example, on Etsy. So, um, so Etsy's about a $200 million a year business uh, at the uh, transaction level. I mean, that $200 million of, of transactions are happening uh, every year on Etsy. And that's doubling year over year. And it's been doubling for the past couple of years. So it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a pretty big business. And it's getting bigger uh, quickly. Um, and the thing that's interesting about Etsy is it was started by three people, sort of the perfect founding team. Rob Kalin, who was the lead founder CEO who is an amazing product uh, visualizer. He can imagine a product and, and describe it to engineers, and then they build it. And he teamed up with two young engineers, and they, and they built Etsy. And, and it really just took off you know, very organically. And Rob ran the company for three years. And when it got up to be about 75 people, um, he went through a phase where he felt that he was no longer effective. And I think the reason that happened was that um, a lot of the people that Rob and some of the other people hired weren't exactly the right people, and um, the engineering team in particular was dominated by his two co-founders, and, um, and, and they were they were very particular about the way they wanted to do things, and, and Rob ended up kind of getting at loggerheads with them. And so the answer was, uh, and it was Rob's answer actually, it wasn't, wasn't uh, forced on him by anybody, to bring in a, a professional manager. So the company hired a um, really great woman named Maria Thomas, and she came in and built a, uh, uh, well, rebuilt the engineering team, the two, Rob's two co-founders left and uh, built a senior management team uh, across every sort of major line of the company. And, um, and, and the company continued to do, perform really well, but there wasn't, uh, it became more of a business and it, it lost a little bit of the creative, chaotic, uh, culture and and style that it had under Rob, and um, it and a, and a bunch of people who worked inside the company started to feel like the company was kind of stalling out creatively, not financially, and so we did a pretty, uh, I would say, unconventional thing. Uh, we asked Rob to come back in and be CEO again. But this time around, he's got, a, he's got a completely different team of people to work with. Um, and he's got you know, 40 engineers led by a fantastic VP of engineering and a fantastic VP of uh, technical operations. And he's got a business team. We've got financial people who are experienced. We've got marketing people who are experienced. We have international uh, talent now. And so you know, he can do what he does well, which is paint a vision and turn it over to, to the team that, that's now in place, and, and they can largely execute it without him having to um, kind of tell everybody what to do. So I'm pretty optimistic it's going to work out, the, the new management structure. And the opportunity is a global opportunity. So the thing that, that's going to happen this year is that we're going to internationalize the site into hopefully a dozen languages. Already, 25% of the, the transactions happen cross-border. And you know, it was the first thing I thought about when I thought about this business. Like, why can't I buy jewelry from somebody in Africa, or somebody in Thailand, or somebody in, in, uh, 
you know, some interesting Brazil or some really interesting part of the world where you can get access to really authentic cultural craft that doesn't go through five middlemen on the way to some, you know, store in New York. Um, and, uh, and I think that's going to happen this year. Uh, and I think it's going to turn into a global marketplace and, uh, and that's going to be pretty exciting. And the other thing I think that's going to happen is I think it's going to spread a little bit more in terms of the kinds of um, things that people could, could buy on Etsy. Um, I don't think it'll ever move you know, entirely beyond the artistic sort of handmade roots, but I think that there are more things that, um, that the marketplace could, could take on that uh, they already have, for example, vintage items and they have um, supplies and there's other things that I think fit very well that they could, they could add to the marketplace. So, you know, I, I really think this could be, you know, billion dollars of transactions in the marketplace in the next <coughs> three to four years. Um, and that would easily be a public company. So that's kind of my hope. So when you just talked about how Etsy like lost a little bit of the creativity when it changed owners, like that reminded me of something. Um, a lot of times in venture capital, like obviously the end of a lot of these businesses is to be sold to like a bigger acquirer. And sometimes when that happens, it loses a lot of the creativity and the quality of the original business, and this especially happens in biotech, which I know is not your expertise, but often these companies just don't innovate anymore, they don't create anything new. So how do you think that a company who's acquiring someone else can really maintain that kind of atmosphere or keep someone innovating even when they're trying to integrate someone into their overall structure? Well, I think the integration is the problem. Uh, so I've seen this so many times. Uh, it's You can suck the creativity out of a, of a creative organization very quickly if you force them to play by the big company rules. Um, and, uh, you know, the classic example is, um, you know, a, a, a small company of 20 or 30 people getting bought by a big company, and then the next thing they know, they're spending three quarters of their time in meetings, planning meetings or whatever you want to call them. And, and they can't, they can't do what they used to. They don't have, they don't have the, the organization or the lack of organization that allowed them to be creative and innovative. Um, so I think a lot of it is forcing big company procedures and policies on really small companies. And I think that's how uh, you can really screw up an acquisition. I think there's two kinds of acquisitions that you can make. You can buy something that's working really well that's highly creative, something like Pixar would be an example of that, and leave it alone. And just say, keep doing what you're doing, and you know we've got a bigger balance sheet, so we'll let you make more movies, and um, other than that, we're not gonna touch you. And I think that can work just fine. That's what the Washington Post company did with Kaplan when they bought it 15 years ago, and Kaplan's now <coughs> five times bigger than the Washington Post. Um, the other thing you could do is you could buy something that absolutely has to be integrated into what you do. So an example of that was Microsoft bought Hotmail and then just made Hotmail, you know, its web email service and, and, and they totally integrated it. Um, and that's fine too. But like a half, but the thing that I think is really bad to do is like a half integration. Like in the case of something like I mean, Hotmail is not even the best example. I'm trying to think of something like where you don't even need the team anymore. Like you just, you take technology and you integrate it into what you do and, and you don't even take the team. Like it doesn't matter. Like you're not buying it for the team. That, that works really well. Or buying the team and leaving it on, alone works really well. But buying a team and then forcing it to be part of some, you know, bureaucratic big company culture, I think almost never works.